Well, good morning. It has been a while since I have joined you on here. Um, it is great to be with you. As we've continued throughout this Pentecost season or the season after Pentecost, we have had this opportunity to journey once again as we encounter along with the people who Jesus is. And along with who Jesus is, who are we in light of who Jesus is? And then this third part is, who are we called to be in light of who Jesus is? And so our text this morning is quite a difficult text for some of us, for many of us, if we are honest. Our text begins with Peter, Jesus asking, his disciples. Who do the people say that I am? And this summer, we have had this opportunity to hear over and over again by our text of who people say that Jesus is. But also, if we ask our neighbors and those around us who we say Jesus is, just like the disciples gave varying answers, we would have varying answers. But then Jesus asked a question, not who do people say that I am, but who do you say that I am? So that is my question for you. Who do you say that Jesus is? Who is Jesus to? Who is this person that you are worshiping? God, you that have come to bring life. Who do you say that Jesus is? Are you confessing like Peter is as we had confession and forgiveness just now? that Jesus is the Messiah. And yet, Jesus tells him not to say anything. But to us, Jesus being the Messiah, I, I think is the point. But are we proclaiming Jesus is the Messiah? Or are we just here because somebody else was here? Are we understanding that what he said in this next section about what it means to be the Messiah, but also what it means to follow the Messiah means. If we say and confess that Jesus is the Messiah, what does that mean? Does that mean, as he said, that Jesus, must, the Son of Man, must undergo great suffering, be rejected and killed and rise three days later? For us, this is something we know what has come. We encounter this every year. We journey through Jesus's death, the cross and the resurrection every year. Every year we know, but to Peter and the disciples and the people, this was their first encounter. From what they have seen and heard and experienced, Jesus was the Messiah. To them, they understood what a Messiah meant, what it meant to be Messiah. But yet at the same time, even though they knew what was to come by him being the Messiah, they didn't want to encounter that their friend must undergo suffering, death, betrayal, and being ri ri risen again. So yet here, after Peter confesses who Jesus is, who he thinks Jesus is, sometimes our humanness gets in the way. And Jesus had to stop him and say, stop. Focus on things here, things above, not human things, things that we can control. But then Jesus brought the crowd around him, along with his disciples, and said the truth of it. Discipleship is not easy. Doing what God calls us is not easy. Just as Jesus had to undergo suffering and death, we too are not called to the easy road. 
And so as we think about these questions that I opposed, imposed at the beginning of the summer, thinking about who Jesus is, who Jesus is calling us to be, or who we are in light of who Jesus is and who God, is, Jesus is calling us to be. I think today, particularly, if we confess that Jesus is Lord, how does that impact how you and I live? How does it impact how I live? Some say that as Christians, if we follow Jesus, we sh life should be easy. And that, you know, all the good things, good things should happen to us. But the many things we have seen this summer and encountered, and most of us in our lives have encountered hard, hard things. And yet, when we encounter hard, hard things, we could turn away from God and blame God and reject God. Or we can cling to who Jesus is and who Jesus has called us to be. When I first journeyed to seminary, I had lots of reservations. I had lots of concerns that God could use somebody like me, somebody ordinary, somebody who had just lots of baggage. That first summer after I attended my first year of um, completing my undergrad, I was gearing up to take summer Greek, which would officially be my first seminary class. And I would begin full-time seminary in the fall. And seminary is the courses of work that we take to become a pastor in the ELCA. So that first summer I went home, I was kind of like, all right, God, I can do this. I really can. I can follow you. I can follow this calling that you might have for me. That for that summer, I beginning part of the summer, I was just going back to work at the bank that I had worked at before I went away. And I was also doing an internship at a hospice, which both have gravely and amazingly impact who I am and who I've become as a person and a pastor. But that summer, my life changed forever. When I was held up at gunpoint in a bank robbery, I was an employee at the bank. And those first few years following that, even that summer, I was like, God, who, who are you? And what does this mean? And if I confess that you are Jesus and that you, all these things I know about you being the comforter, the protector, and yet this happened to me. How am I supposed to continue confessing that you are Christ when I don't feel safe, when I don't feel protected? That was a big turning point for me and my faith. And that is not the first hard thing that I had ever encountered. But that was the first hard thing I'd encountered on this journey to be Christ's disciple and really follow where God was calling me. It was really one of those places, crossroads, like we are in this text today. Now looking back, I know God did not cause the robbery to happen. I know that. And yet, the robbery that day has taught me so much, has given me the ability to meet people where they're at in a way that I would have never before. That also gave me the chance 
for God to bring healing to my life in ways that I would have never acknowledged or accepted if that wouldn't have happened. And I'm not saying God caused that to happen, but in both Romans and in Genesis, we hear that God makes good out of things. And yet somehow here in this text, we're reminded of that as well. God brought life out of death. Jesus had to suffer death to find life. And at times we might too. And I think this text is important. It's one of those turning points for us. Are we confessing Jesus with our lips or our hearts? Are we taking up this cross? Are we living life in the face of death? Are we willing to take things that come to us that may not be easy? Are we going to turn away when things get hard? Or are we going to remember God's promises and know and feel that God is present? There is many times within those few years, and even now, almost 10 years later, actually 10 years later, that I'm reminded in those moments that I wasn't alone, that through it all, Christ was with me. And I have this bracelet that I like to wear. And it's got raised letters. And it's got a Bible passage on it. But the part I cling to the most is the words Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that is super important. It's a, That's from Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. And the only way we can confess that Jesus is Lord and take up our cross, the things that we need to take up to share our brother with our brothers and sisters who Christ is, is by knowing that we are not alone in this journey. The things we encounter, God leads the way. Jesus wasn't alone. In his days, he was surrounded by his disciples, but he had God with him. Knowing that he was going to face death, he predicted his death right here. And just like his disciples, I don't think we want to hear it. But it comes down to more today than who do we say that Jesus is. It's how we respond to that, how we live that out, how he's calling us. If you want to become my followers, are we our, his followers? Are we his disciples? Or are we just here because others were here? That's a tough question, a tough place to be. And it's another crossroads for Jesus, his disciples, and for us. Jesus' question for you today, you come and follow me. That is my prayer for you. As you struggle through this, what it means to confess and understand who Jesus is, that God will give you the peace and understanding as you continue this journey and follow Jesus as his disciple knowing that you are not alone in the things that you face. Amen.